Mr. Johnson for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this very important hearing. And thank you to the witnesses for your time and your testimony. I've been a longstanding advocate of the DOT's Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program, which facilitates the success of women and minority-owned businesses throughout the transportation sector. Unfortunately, however, there is no DBE program for federal funds administered under the Federal Railroad Administration, the FRA, despite systemic discrimination based on race and sex that severely limits the economic prosperity of minority-owned businesses. Not only must Congress strengthen the existing DBE program under DOT, we must also establish a similar program under the FRA for the rail transportation industry, and this is crucial to mitigating inequality. Mr. Canty, your testimony asserts that discriminatory and unprofessional behavior by prime contractors has gone unpunished by Florida DOT, FDOT. And what's more, the FDOT has de demonstrated a willingness to ignore discriminatory complaints altogether, allowing bad actors to receive additional funding. Your firm has engaged in work across the East Coast and the South, including in my home state of Georgia. Based on your experience, how confident are you that the discriminatory experience, experience you were subjected to is representative of that experience by minority-owned firms across the country? I'm very confident of it because since my story has been told, I've had a plethora of folks send me information, um, send me information on it, um, including a picture of a noose on a job in LaGuardia by the same contractor which I was blown away by, I, I, you know, even with my experience of seeing what I've seen. So it's absolutely representative. I think maybe the difference with me a little bit is I came up under these folks, so I was able to document in the way they were able to document. And that way it, it didn't just get swept under the rug. And, um, you know, I'm no tougher than any other man or woman or anybody here. But, um, I mean, I, 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 you know, you just can't give up. And um, no matter what, some, one day somebody will hear it. Um, some places in the country are worse than others. Um, I, you know, um, a lot of reason nothing will change. Nothing changes is that chain of custody from the state to the uh, for them to really control it doesn't exist. Like in Florida, they oh, really okay. don't have any control right. over crime. So, okay, gotcha. Thank you, uh, Thank you. Mr. Ramanujam. Your testimony indicates the challenges DBE businesses face due to current limitations in the program, such as how size standards for small businesses have not been adjusted for inflation. How does the lack of a uniform DBE size standard diminish a minority owned prime contractor's ability to compete with non DBE firms? Thank you, sir. My uh, testimony referred to the time when we actually lost our DBE status uh, earlier, uh, and it has since uh, been adjusted, but it needs to be adjusted some more. To answer your question, the value of the dollar is not as much as it was before. We all know that, whether it's a gallon of milk or a gallon of gas. The projects that are coming out are much larger. And with the recent, uh, uh, and I thank all of you members here for passing the infrastructure stimulus, with the recent infrastructure stimulus, the projects are much, much larger. The size standards are not amenable or uh, uh, you know, uh, favorable for a small firm like ours to even get anything as a prime. We are constantly having to depend being a sub. And once you are dependent on being a sub, your destiny is not in your hands. So it has a very real, it has a very limiting and a very negative impact on small businesses to not have the size standard pegged into inflation. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Otero, I commend your leadership as a minority business owner for more than 30 years. How do you believe the existing DBE program can be strengthened to increase meaningful participation of businesses beyond subcontracting opportunities? Well, I, I, I think that what the program should also be focusing on is capacity building. Uh, 
you know, all too often we're given uh, subcontracting opportunities, to, but it's just a point here, a point there. Uh, and and, and it, that doesn't really help the small business in any way. Uh, there should be more of a mentoring uh, relationship, but the agency has to be the one who drives this kind of philosophy that says, okay, you're going to have 10 or five different subconsultants on this project, but what are their roles? That there is a meaningful role that that, that, that firm is going to provide that's going to help that firm grow its own capacity. Because if all you're doing is some menial type of task that is um, going to be what you're relegated to, it really, uh, all it's doing is satisfying the goal, but not achieving the true spirit of what the program is intended for, which is have meaningful participation so that these firms are growing and are able to eventually be uh, able to su survive on their own. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. And I expect Gentlemen's time is expiring. Uh, next, we have.